Well, we have finally reached 10,000 subscribers here on Disciple Dojo. Woohoo! I am so excited. I'm so thankful for all the support that you viewers and subscribers in particular and subscribers who have clicked the notifications icon really in particular. So thankful for all the support you've shown. Now, not to sound ungrateful, but remember our goal for the year originally was 20,000 subscribers. So we are halfway there and we still have three months left in the calendar year. So will we make that goal? I don't know, but we'll see if people keep hearing about and liking and subscribing to this channel, then we may very well get there with a final push at the end of the year. But We've said all along, as soon as we hit 10,000, we're going to do a big giveaway. And that is what we are going to do. We are going to be giving away a couple of resources. These are resources that have either been donated or that I have had in my own library over the years that I've used and learned from and that I want to pass on to not only clear up shelf space for newer resources, but also to share with viewers who are looking for some resources and who have supported this channel by subscribing. So we're going to do a couple of different giveaways. Stay tuned to the end of this video for directions on how to enter to win these. Now, first up, we're going to give away some resources for our biblical languages nerds out there. Those of you that have uh, working knowledge of the biblical languages, Greek and Hebrew, or you would like to have working knowledge, maybe you used to have working knowledge. We've got some resources that I want to give to a viewer. So we're going to do two different little giveaways. The first are for the Hebrew Bible nerds out there. Back when I learned Hebrew, we used to have these things called CDs, vintage. And so this is Basics of Biblical Hebrew, all of the vocabulary, all the vocabulary in Miles Van Pelt and Gary Pratico's Basics of Biblical Hebrew on one CD, you can pop this in your CD player in the car if cars still have CD players. I think most do. Or you can rip it into digital and listen to it however you want. But I'm going to be giving this away and also giving away this analytic Hebrew and Chaldee lexicon. This was printed in the 70s, and this was actually my dad's resource that he used in seminary. And I used it 25-ish years later in my seminary. And now, 20-ish years later, we're going to pass it on to somebody else. So a viewer out there, if you are learning Hebrew or just want to keep your Hebrew sharp and you want to have another resource on the shelf for doing Hebrew word studies, this is one pack that we're going to be giving away. But JM, I don't know Hebrew. I focus on Greek because I'm a New Testament Bible nerd. Don't worry. We've got you covered too. Have some other vintage CD resources for our Greek focused people out there. Jonathan Pennington and his readings in the Greek New Testament. These are audio CDs of him actually reading the Greek New Testament, so you can hear it being read. And along with that, New Testament Greek vocabulary, like the CD from Pratico and Van Pelt, this was a resource to help you learn audibly Greek vocabulary words that appear frequently throughout the New Testament. So once again, pop these in your car while you're driving along, brush up on your Greek. And along with these, we're going to give away an older edition of BDAG. This was donated by a scholar friend as he was cleaning out his library. This is BDAG before the D was in it, before Donker was on board. This is just Bauer, Arndt, and Gingrich. But it is a lexicon of all of the Greek words that you'll find in the New Testament. It's not the latest edition of BDAG, but it is still a good resource that many a seminarian use to get them through their Greek exegesis classes. So we have a Greek bundle giveaway along with our Hebrew bundle giveaway. Now, some people prefer to focus on the background of the text. And we also had a couple of resources donated that I would like to pass on to some subscribers out there as well. The first one is InterVarsity Press's Dictionary of Paul and his letters. This is the first edition. There is a newer edition that's come out and it has different articles in it. So a number of New Testament scholars I know use both of them and refer to both of them. This was produced in the 90s and it has all kinds of articles about anything having to do with Paul and his letters in the New Testament. You've got articles on the household codes, justification, marriage and divorce, adultery and incest, Paul and his interpreters, how Paul has been read over the centuries. So anything involving Pauline studies, you're going to get a good introductory treatment in this volume. We're going to be giving this one away to a viewer. Another prize we're going to be giving away is Craig Keener's 
Bible background commentary on the New Testament. So not just focusing on Paul, but the world of the New Testament overall. This volume is a wealth of information about all of the backgrounds that the New Testament draws from, alludes to, or presupposes. But rather than being a dictionary, this is actually a commentary. So it follows the books of the New Testament in their canonical order. Craig Keener is probably one of, if not the foremost experts in the world on the background of the New Testament. And so we'll be giving this away to a subscriber as well. And then lastly, we come to our grand prize that we're going to give to one lucky viewer, and that is the Anchor Bible Dictionary. I can barely hold it up. These volumes were donated by a scholar who is a friend and supporter of Disciple Dojo. And I wanted to take a look at what is actually in this. This is not a full review of the Anchor Bible Dictionary, but since a significant amount of what we do here on the channel is reviewing study Bibles and study resources. I thought, actually, let's take a look at what we're giving away so that if you don't know what the Anchor Bible Dictionary is, you at least have an idea of what it is and why you may want to use it in your own biblical studies. So what do you see in the Anchor Bible Dictionary? Well, on the inside cover and on the back cover, you have two different maps. And these are very specific maps with a specific purpose. This first map is archeological finds in Palestine, in the Holy Land, and they're gridded off. I don't know if you can see it clearly on the camera, but this is the Holy Land and these locations that are noted with this specific grid pattern with its own numbering. The reason they do this is because sometimes in biblical archeology, span sites will be mentioned and made reference to in relation to another town or a local monument of some sort or just some landmark. But what happens is because of the instability politically and geographically in Israel-Palestine, borders and towns and villages are not always recognized by different people for different reasons. So what this map seeks to do is to locate them objectively so no matter what the different political parties call these different areas, you have an objective fixed point on a map where those who are studying or doing biblical archaeology can refer and be talking about the same places. The map in the back is similar, but it focuses on the wider world of the ancient Near East and the Mediterranean. And the introduction explains this in more detail. So then after the title page, then these are the consultants, and these are some heavy-hitting names in academic biblical scholarship. I mean, James Charlesworth, Frank Moore Cross, these are names that every biblical studies student knows. There's the editorial staff, and then there's about 25 pages of the list of contributors. Why so many contributors? Because there's a lot in these six volumes. And so skimming through the contributors, there's a number of names that jump out to me from all different faith traditions. I mean, you have Robert Alter. Some of you may be familiar with his translation of the Old Testament. And then you have Bill Arnold. He's, I believe, at Asbury now. You have David Awney and Richard Bauckham, two phenomenal Revelation scholars. Then you have people like Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan. They're members of the Jesus Seminar, so kind of out there on the fringes of New Testament scholarship. You have Mark Brettler. He was one of the editors of the Jewish Study Bible series that we've reviewed here on the channel. You have Walter Brueggemann, a renowned Old Testament scholar from a mainline tradition. John J. Collins, expert on intertestamental literature. You have Frederick William Donker. I believe he's the D in BDAG, the newer Greek lexicon. James Gunn was a key figure especially in the early so-called New Perspective on Paul movement. Craig Evans, a very, very renowned New Testament scholar in Canada. If Terence Fretheim, who has written one of my favorite commentaries out there on Exodus. William Hallow, I believe also he's a Jewish scholar, but expert in ancient Near East material. He was the editor of Context of Scripture. So whenever you see me here on the channel referring to Ugaritic texts or Egyptian inscriptions, usually I'm pulling from Hallow's compilation called The Context of Scripture. Victor Hamilton at Asbury College, phenomenal Genesis commentary that he's written. Have Richard Hayes, who was formerly at Duke University, wonderful New Testament scholar. Gerhard Hassel, kind of an expert in biblical theology. Kenneth Kitchens, one of the most renowned evangelical voices in the ancient Near East and Egyptian background of scripture. Have I, Howard Marshall, Ralph Martin, Ken Matthews, all three of whose commentaries I've used extensively. Well-known ancient Near East scholar, George Mendenhall, and then probably the go-to guy on Leviticus, Jacob Milgram. 
There's even contribution by Eugene Nita, an expert in biblical translation. You have my old Hebrew professor, Gary Pratico. And then you also have Gary Rinsberg, whose book, How the Bible is Written, we've reviewed here on the channel not too long ago. Sort of the patriarch of the New Perspective on Paul movement, E.P. Sanders is a contributor. And then Jewish commentator, Nahum Sarna, another former professor of mine and author of How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth, Doug Stewart. And then you have progressive voices like James Tabor and Phyllis Tribble, Dead Sea Scroll expert Emmanuel Tove, and then three of my favorite scholars on the same page, Ben Witherington, Christopher Wright, and N.T. Wright. So it is a wide array of perspectives you're getting. This is not an evangelical resource. It's not a liberal Protestant resource. It's not even a Protestant resource. There are Catholic, Jewish, there's conservative, there's liberal moderate, orthodox. In a project this big, you're getting tons of perspectives on whatever these different scholars have focused on in their career. Now, right in the introduction of the Anchor Bible Dictionary, they talk about how previous Bible dictionaries, that is those published in the early 20th century, some of the mid-century era, they would make sweeping assertions and generalities about what scholars believed. And unfortunately, that has crept its way into preaching and seminary teaching and even popular presentations of the Bible. And so what the editors of the Anchor Bible Dictionary have said right up front, I'll show you where you can read it for yourself. They say one will be hard pressed to find in these pages any sort of sweeping historical synthesis that presumes a scholarly consensus. Scholarly consensus simply does not exist here at the end of the 20th century. And this was published in the 19th. 90s, but I think this would apply equally at the beginning of the 21st century where we are. This is an important thing to note because frequently you hear people say, well, scholars maintain, and they speak of scholars as if they're monolithic. So I was really happy to see that right in the introduction to the Anchor Bible Dictionary. Unfortunately, most people that use this resource probably will not or have not ever read the introduction, but it's right there. After that, there's a section on how to use the dictionary, like why did they choose certain articles? Basically, they used, because this was compiled starting in the 1970s and throughout the 1980s, and then it was published in the 90s, it was compiled using the text of the RSV. The RSV was sort of the mid-20th century scholarly translation that was preferred across denominational and religious lines. Now, today, most in scholarly academic community prefer the NRSV, and as of last year, the NRSV UE updated edition. But at the time that this was being compiled, the RSV probably had the widest use among academic biblical scholars. So they took the RSV, and so basically every name, whether it's the name of a person or a place or a concept, every name in scripture, you're going to find an entry in the Anchor Bible Dictionary. Now, some may be very short. Like, for instance, this entry on Achban, it's just a person in a genealogy, so it just gives the references, and it just says the identity is uncertain. The name itself only occurs in extended genealogy, and that's it. That's the whole article. And then others will be really long, like this article on Aaron, the first article in the Anchor Bible Dictionary. It's about five pages. And that goes for place names as well. The more prominent, the more important a location, probably the longer the article about it will be. Now, most of the articles are print, but there are also some illustrations. There are some photographs, not many, but sprinkled throughout. You have some line drawings of Egyptian hieroglyphics. You have some actual statues that have been found. You have the artwork that's been found on a tomb. And then some actual pictures of ruins and inscriptions. And there are also a few maps or archaeological reconstructions. So it's not an illustrated Bible dictionary by any means, but there are some illustrations and some pictures and some figures and photographs. There are a list of abbreviations at the beginning because in any work this size of scholarship, they have to use abbreviations or else it would be like five times longer. So all of the journal names or the ancient texts and inscriptions, there's about 20 or 30 pages worth of this. So if you're reading an entry and you come across an abbreviation you don't recognize, you just flip back here, find it, and it'll tell you what it's referring to. Now, most of the entries are names or places. So you're reading along and you've got Abishalom, Abishua, Abishur, Abital, Abitub, Abiud. 
But then there are some places, abode of the dead is after that. And there's a note that just says, see dead, and then comma, abode of the dead. So you'd look up the article on dead if you wanted to know about this, what the RSV calls the abode of the dead. Then there's an article on the abomination of desolation. And this is a couple of pages. And there are also articles on concepts that aren't specifically mentioned in scripture, but that are either tangentially mentioned or that are important in understanding the world of the Bible. So for instance, there's a great article here on abortion in antiquity. And so it talks about abortion in the ancient Near East and in different laws throughout the region. And then it talks about it in the Hellenistic and the Roman world, and then abortion in ancient Judaism and the New Testament background. And then there's a conclusion on it and then bibliography if you want to study it more. And then we come to an article on Abraham, which is very long for obvious reasons. So there are six of these volumes and we're going to give all six volumes away to our grand prize winner as a thank you for the support you guys have all given us to grow this channel over the past couple of years. And as a way of just putting more resources into people's hands that may not have them. This stuff doesn't really do anybody any good if it just sits here on the shelves at Disciple Dojo. So I want to give this stuff away to viewers. And this contest is going to be super easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on this video down below in the comment section saying how long you've been watching Disciple Dojo content and which of these resources you'd like to have. That's it. We're going to run this contest until the end of October. So on November 1st is when I'll choose the winner. So you have all month to enter. Now, these are not going to be cheap to ship, so we're going to have to ship them media mail. Because of that, we can only ship to U.S. postal addresses. So if you are an international viewer, if you're in the Philippines, if you're in Europe, if you're in Africa, the Middle East, India, we have viewers from all over. I wish I could send media mail to your country. We just can't do it. We cannot afford to ship these resources, especially resources this heavy, we can't afford to ship them overseas. So please, if you're watching this and you are an international viewer, I'm so thankful and grateful. But if you enter and win, which has happened before, I won't be able to get these to you and we'll have to pick somebody else. Now, if you live overseas and you have friends or family that do have a U.S. postal address, great, enter away. But there has to be a valid U.S. postal address. And this should go without saying, you have to be a subscriber to this channel. So subscribe if you haven't already. And if you have a valid U.S. postal address, feel free to leave a comment below saying how long you've been a Dojo viewer and which resource you'd like to have. These will be chosen at random. I'm not going to give it to whoever's watched the longest. There's no way for me to verify any of that. But I'm just curious to know when people jumped on board and started tuning in and who's been with us for a long time. That's just interesting to me, but it has no bearing on how we'll choose the winner of this contest. So that's all for now. Stay tuned for more content coming up. We've got some cool interviews lined up in the coming weeks. We're going to be doing more biblical teaching. I'm going to be going back to SBL next month. We're going to take a camera with us and try to get some cool behind the scenes footage there. So let your friends know if they are into anything involving Bible nerdery, Disciple Dojo would love to have them on board. That's all for now. As always, keep training. Mm -hmm.